Hey everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is May 17th, and we're going to talk about a series of troughs that are going to start moving through the Pacific Northwest. That one's already starting to move through right now with um, cold air seen on the satellite imagery over British Columbia and Alberta. You can see some spin up here in the atmosphere with the associated clouds. Some of those clouds are also um, approaching over parts of western washington southwest bc which is keeping uh, mostly cloudy weather but there are some a few sun breaks as well but generally most of the pacific northwest and down the california has got plenty of sunshine right now with relatively um comfortable temperatures there's also another upper level low that's spinning down here off the coast of california but generally just brings some clouds to the open ocean where only sailors are going to be affected but a, a couple more troughs are going to start moving through the pacific northwest and parts of the west coast as we go through later next week. These are kind of originating from the Gulf of Alaska, a pretty active jet stream pattern for this time of the year. And this will also bring some um, severe weather next week, the parts of the plains in the central US as well. And then we're gonna take a look at what the um, the forecast for the summer is looking like at this point, and also the developing La Nina that will likely bring some cooler than average um, weather and also wetter than average weather this coming winter and we'll take a look at that as well. I haven't done a video in a while because I've been rather busy with school and um, I went storm chasing last week as well so I've been my entire schedule has been very booked but I want to start doing a, vi a forecast video at least once a week again so without further ado let's get right into the forecast. Now we're looking at the general ridge and trough positions on the European Mall. Here's Washington, Oregon, California. Here's Hawaii down here. Here's British Columbia all the way up here. You can see this dark um, blue. That's This is the trough of low pressure that's bringing some um, relatively unsettled weather, the parts of British Columbia and Washington State as well. This is going to be swinging off east and to the south as it brings some severe weather to parts of the central U.S. coming later this weekend in into early next week. It also brings some relatively chilly temperatures and did result in some rather um, some locally strong winds apart across parts of western Washington yesterday. Um, so Thursday, and that brings some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour for parts of the Woodby Island area, um, the San Juan County area, and also along the sh most of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Also brings some gusty winds to parts of the Seattle, the Seattle metro area as well, with some gusts over 40 miles per hour that resulted in some scattered power outages. So definitely a pretty potent system for May standards. And as we play this out, you can see that this trough kind of moves off to the east, may bring some storms to parts of the um, northern um, U.S. states out there. But right on its heels, we got another trough of low pressure that maybe not as strong, but starts moving through around the Saturday, the Sunday time frame from um, the British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. This is going to bring some um, convective precipitation. So basically, it's going to be in a more showery form. So not everybody's going to be getting rain at the same time, but there's going to be some isolated thunderstorm chances as well as this very cold air aloft generates um, some atmospheric instability and that causes um, uh, um, cumulus clouds to form and eventually build into um, sh showers and isolated thunderstorms. And you can see this kind of weakens and shifts off east as we go into Monday. We get a bit of a ridge that tries to build in on Monday, but it's kind of a, a very weak ridge. And we get another trough of low pressure moving down later Tuesday in the late Tuesday into Wednesday as well. The model the GFS kind of has a bit of a stronger trough here, but generally the same impacts are expected with either model solution. And then you can see if we go all the way out the next week and there's even potential for another strong trough of low pressures. So definitely a rather stormy period of weather for the Pacific Northwest and parts of California as well as we go through later this week and, and into next week. Now looking at the six hour precipitation type in inches, you can see that there's some general showers around as that first trough of low pressure starts moving eastward not really having that much impacts with um, precipitation. But as we go through Saturday morning, there's going to be a convergent zone that sets up over parts of western Washington, anywhere from um, Skagit County down towards um, the King County area is likely to get into some of this convergent zone action as we go through most of Saturday. There is going to be some isolated thunderstorm um, chances with that convergent zone as well as I'll show you here in a couple minutes. But generally, most of that precipitation 
ends by Sunday morning with some maybe some residual showers in uh, parts of the mountains as we go through later on Sunday. Then Monday looks to be uh, mostly dry as that um that really that weak ridge of high pressure starts trying to um uh, build its way into the area, but swift swiftly gets pushed out of here as another trough of low pressure and associated precipitation starts moving in later on Monday in the Tuesday. And you can see that this precipitation is going to be starting um, about late, very late, more like early Tuesday morning through um, Wednesday morning, actually. And there's probably going to be some convergence zone activity overnight Tuesday in the Wednesday morning as well. Some of that onshore flow wraps that moisture around the Olympic Mountains and they meet right in the middle over Puget Sound. You can t and if we play this back, we can also see some general like uh, isolated thunderstorm chances over parts of the Sierra Nevada mountains in California as well over the next few days and in the early next week. But really shouldn't affect um many places except maybe parts of lake tahoe and stuff probably gonna be some picturesque lightning out there as well as those um thunderstorms likely won't have too much precipitation associated with them in california but as we start going through the um wednesday in the thursday time frame you can see that other the third trough in the series of low pressure systems moving through the pacific northwest will be kicking out of the area late wednesday evening and that will start bringing some mountain snows and lowland rain in the parts of idaho and montana and eastern washington late wednesday in the thursday and that will move east and then you can see the effects of another trough of low pressure starting to affect the area later next week and that we'll take a, a, a closer look at as we get closer to um, that event. Now looking at the total precipitation over the next seven days on the European Mall, you can see pretty beneficial precipitation over parts of the Cascades um, of uh, Southern British Columbia and Washington as well, with some convergent zone activity over the Puget Sound, generally around maybe a, a couple tenths of an inch to and half an inch of rain expected over parts of Western Washington, Southwest BC over the next week or so. You can also see some precip precipitation amounts in the mountains approaching to one to three inches of rainfall. So it's definitely very beneficial for this time of the year, especially as the mountain snowpack has kind of been a little lack cluster lately but you can see that some of that thunderstorm activity over the sierra nevada may be dropping a quick a quarter to a half an inch of rain under some of those heavier showers and thunderstorms down there but should mostly stay um, remote to those mountain locations down there now looking at the 10 meter wind gusts and my, miles per hour, you can see some generally gusty winds over the mountain areas and out east towards Montana as that low pressure system brings a pressure gradient over the mountains and pushes that air out um, to the east. And you can see some of that marine air that starts making its way through the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Strait of Georgia in western Washington and southwest BC. Some of that um, wraps around the Chehalis Gap south of the Olympic Mountains near just the um, southwest of SeaTac. And as that um, moves through, you can see those winds kind of calm down from the mountain locations. But you can see later this evening and in the Saturday morning, a westerly surge of wind will um, continue down the Strait Juan de Fuca, impacting parts of the Island County area and, and San Juan County and um, along the Strait of Georgia, including Port Angeles and Port Townsend there in western Washington and some breezy winds for Vancouver Island as well in British Columbia. But those westerly ones should calm down as we go through later on Saturday, maybe picking up a little bit each evening, but that's kind of normal for th this area. And then you can see that um, the constant um, breezy, the uh, pretty gusty winds, gale force winds off the coast of northern central California. This is very common this time of the year as so you get that high pressure off to the west and you get the, the, these low pressure systems going off to the east and this is causes a pressure gradient right along the coastline that brings these constant gales out of the north and northeast across those waters so definitely some rather large waves this time of the year down there and you can see this it's almost complete constant weakening at sometimes but then strengthening other days as well and continues through almost the 10 day period as well really no windstorms expected in the next 10 days or so for all the west coast and that's really to be expected we can get an odd windstorm here once in a while during the month of may and even in the june as well but they become increasingly uncommon this time of the year 
Now looking at the total cloud cover, um, this is percentage, so 100% is 100% covered in clouds, 0% uh, is no clouds whatsoever. And you can see that generally um, very clear weather if you're basically Oregon South, there's going to be um, periods of um, clouds moving in the, the Pacific Northwest every day over the next week or so as these um, troughs of low pressure just continue to um, bring some of that moisture in from the ocean. But it shouldn't be a complete um, cloud um, cover like every single day there's gonna be sun breaks uh, at least um, most of the daytime but there's also gonna be some periods of complete overcast especially as we go through the um, Tuesday and the Wednesday next week as that um, strong trough of low pressure moves in the area brings some widespread precipitation with it as well now look at the lightning flash density on the European mall this is the six hour average and as we go through later on Saturday, you can see some of this activity popping up over the Sierra Nevadas and potentially some of those coastal mountain ranges in Northern California as well. But you can see that this convergence of activity in Western Washington is kind of being picked up anywhere from basically um, the Fraser River Valley in Southwest BC out the Vancouver Island down towards the Southern Puget Sound has a chance for an isolated rumble of thunder as well. So just keep an eye out on the sky and if you um see dark clouds um just make sure that have a shelter nearby especially if you hear a rumble of thunder and you can see that kind of continues as we go through um saturday evening before kicking east and mostly dying down there's gonna be a kind of a diurnal like daily um thunderstorm activity over parts of the sierra nevada but um should be that much of a problem and maybe some potential for some more thunderstorm activity for parts of the mountains as we go through later next week with that Cold air loft associated with those troughs of low pressure. Now look at the composite reflectivity on the HRRR model. This is kind of showing what the radar may look like as we go through the next day. You can see these convective showers starting to spark up over southwest British Columbia as we go through Saturday morning before spreading over a western Washington with the isolated chance of thunderstorm, especially in those convergence zones. There's going to be one convergence zone in the Puget Sound where those winds are wrap around the Strayway and the Fuca and the Chehalis Gap around the Olympic Mountain Range. And these kind converge over the Puget Sound. The other convergence zone that's going to form is going to be the Vancouver Island Convergence Zone. This kind of forms in the northern um, Puget Sound up towards Bellingham. Th this is basically the winds wrap down the Strait of Georgia from the north and northwest. And they also wrap around the Strait of Georgia and these mountains on Vancouver Island. It causes the winds to converge right over the San Juan Islands typically. And that will be another um, feature for uh, some isolated thunderstorm activity as we go through Saturday night. Some shower activity will continue in the Sunday morning as well some of this activity might reach oregon but most of it's going to be staying in southwest bc and also washington state and moving out towards the idaho panhandle and western montana now looking at daily two meter um, temperatures, uh, this is for tomorrow, Saturday. You can see generally chillier weather out west for this time of the year in western Washington with highs generally in the upper, mid the upper 50s with um, out east getting in the 70s as well. You can see that California is um, being pre pretty toasty as that ridge of high pressure kind of remains down there over the southwest United States. It isn't too terribly uncommon for them to get these type of temperatures this time of the year but it's definitely a little toastier than normal. You can see some of the desert southwest getting well over 100 degrees, which is kind of normal for those desert regions. And as we go through Sunday and the Monday, the temperatures are going to warm a bit on Monday as that um, weak ridge of high pressure builds in with maybe um, temperatures getting up towards 70 degrees in the Seattle and Portland areas all the way into the mid to upper 70s potentially for the Columbia Basin in eastern Washington. Also getting well in the 80s again in the central valleys of California. Cooler on the coastlines of course with that chillier water, ocean water out there cooling the temperatures. Then the temperatures will also chill back down to the low 60s and upper 50s for western Washington and Oregon as we go through Tuesday and Wednesday with that next trough. And and kind of being variable through the um, next week, but relatively comfortable temperatures for this time of the year, except for where there is rain. Now look at the six to day, a 10 day temperature outlook. This is for May 23rd through the 27th, showing below average temperatures for much of the West Coast and the Western United States as those troughs of low pressure and continue to move down over the regions. And you can also see that um, precipitation will be around normal to slightly above average as we get those multiple storm systems moving through. They're not gonna be very high precipitation making events, but they're gonna boost that um, precipitation to be a little bit above normal for some locations. 
Now for the 8th, the 14 day te temperature outlook. This is for May 25th through the 31st, showing generally below average temperatures are favorable, um, favored th for this time frame as more um, troughs of low pressure are expected to start moving through maybe next week as well. But we'll take a closer look at that as we get closer to that time frame. Also generally above average to near normal precipitation as well. Now taking a look at this is the seasonal temperature outlook that was just released yesterday from the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center. This is showing the, um, the chances for above average temperatures for Jul June, July, and August. So this is the summer month forecast. And you can see that they're forecasting above average temperatures for much of the United States, unfortunately. Um, it, it looks like the models are generally leaning towards a warmer than average summer, but that doesn't mean it's going to be a complete um, f like fire blaze, but generally above average temperatures are being favored. These forecasts are never 100% correct, but generally the, um, they're v the National Weather Service is very good at making these seasonal forecasts. Um, and you can also see that they're favoring um, about a little bit below average to normal precipitation for much of the West Coast. So definitely, we don't really get that much precipitation out West this uh, during the summer months. So below average um, precipitation is not that much of a deficit, but definitely something to keep an eye on as we go into the fire um, season. Unfortunately, the smoke season might be a little worse this year than previous years but hopefully it will not be. Now looking at the um, developing La Nina. So basically um, this is the region down here in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. This is off the coast of South America and Central America. This is where we measure the sea surface temperatures to see if we're gonna be in El Nino versus a La Nina. And you can see below average temperatures generally um, below um, negative 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. This is an anomaly, not the actual temperature. So about half a degree Celsius below average or colder is what is um, called La Nina. And you can see that we're getting into a developing La Nina right now with the last month of average sea surface temperature anomalies is, is starting to creep into the below average territory as those cold waters start getting upwelled from the deeper parts of the ocean. And that's kind of washing away the, um, the El Nino that we were um, previously in for the last year. You can see this um, around mid-April, there was mostly close to near normal um, sea surface temperatures, but you can see that this blue has been creeping up over the last month or so, which is signifying this the La Nina change that we've been forecasting for quite some time now. And if I scroll all the way down, we can see the forecast for La Nina to start really ramping up over the next month or so right here. You can see this is May right here. We're just in the switching of the, um, the, the seasonal water temperatures. And you can see that um, as we go into June and July, La Nina is definitely gonna be um, being favored. So there's gonna be about a 70% chance of La Nina being the dominant um, surface uh, sea surface temperatures as we go into July. And you can see that these te below average temperatures are favored all the way through next winter, which is definitely um, a pretty um, interesting signal to see after being in La Nina for three years in a row before last year. And you can see these are all the different models that are showing the sea surface temperatures. And you can see most of them are showing even potential for a strong La Nina event as well. And you can see that this goes all the way through it towards Jan December and January and February out there. There's, here's a map. You can see the blues are really dominating all the way through. This is the December, January, and February forecast for 2024 slash 2025 with the La Nina over almost the entire um, equatorial Pacific Ocean. So definitely a strong La Nina event is looking increasingly likely. So what does this mean for the weather around here in the Pacific Northwest? So this is a generalization and not exactly what happens every year we have a La Nina. But typically during a La Nina winter, we, we typically have a high pressure ridge that's off the west coast and this causes the jet stream to go way up into alaska and then come down out of british columbia over the pacific northwest this generally means a wetter and colder than normal a winter is typically expected during a la nina year this is not always the case but is the general um statement that is made from observations over the past couple decades so you can see this is a fa more favored pattern for uh, the uh, for snow 
so snow lovers should re uh, be rejoicing that we're going to La Nina this next winter because we typically get um, at least one good snow event during um, our well, plenty more likely during La Nina um, winters as well. So um, this La Nina event looks to be going all the way through the next winter. So definitely going to be quite the active weather pattern potentially as we go through the fall and winter months of this year. So it's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on this as we go. Well, that's it for this video, everybody. I hope everybody found this video enjoyable and informative. Just please get out there and enjoy the nice weather if you are having those clear skies out there and make sure to enjoy the sun breaks, especially in the Pacific Northwest where we're going to be um, having the kind of dance around those clouds over the next week or so. But generally some unsettled weather expected over the next week or so with some thunderstorms over the um, Sierra Nevada. You can actually see some of these thunderstorms kind of developing at the end of this loop over the mountains as that the mountains kind of create that extra forcing that allows those cumulus clouds to become cumulonimbus um, thunderstorms down there. But um, some isolated thunderstorm activity possible tomorrow, Saturday, May 18th over parts of western Washington, southwest BC. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day and I hope everybody has um, a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to everybody in the next video.